Have you seen those those YouTubers that do like the day the Simpsons died, where they find the exact episode where it ceased to have any relevance or interesting things to say? I, I look Maybe forward to this episode of Play Watch Listen being that moment. We're jumping where, the show. What episode of the, the Simpsons right is that? Now, there's, a, there's, there's different opinions in there on which episode of Simpsons was like the last good episode of Simpsons. I've seen some of those videos as well. They don't seem to agree, do they, Austin? They've, got, they've all got different takes. Yeah, but they're always interesting videos yeah. on like the, the – yeah, the, the sort of the, the, the moment that seemingly the, the shark it's was It's not jumped. being political? <laughs> No, and the, it, they had like it's Exodus like the writers, right. Like there was a lot of the original writing staff kind of moved on from The Simpsons. So after about it's like season eight or nine, they a bunch of people like quit. I think that's wow. Oh yeah, you can you can really feel. I think it's I think ten has like a few trailing. Yeah, pretty great classic episodes, but it starts to fall off. I remember thinking I can't really remember the specifics of that episode, but I do remember there being a. Um, an article a few years ago that was like things that have been happening on the Simpsons the last five years that you will have missed if you dropped off at season 10, like everybody else. And one of the things that they brought up that I thought was interesting was um, the Simpsons started making episodes that tried to come to a sort of moral conclusion at the end. Um, That was one of the things they stopped doing probably Mm. in response to the rise of popularity of family guy and stuff like that. They, they kind of, Mm. you know, they, they kind of made it a little bit more jokey and a little less classic. Well, the original Simpsons was, they were all morality plays, right? Basically every episode had like an outcome. Yeah. No, all commentary Mm. where I feel like they stopped having, I don't disagree. I've never heard the hypothesis of like, it was this episode and this definitely happened, but, it did like yeah. i'm definitely aware of that i don't feel like they have statements now it's like receiving well, that, that was the... you don't know when it happened but it did happen <laughs> it certainly did yeah. i'm, I'm gonna make the, a youtube um... video essay about that yeah. it was the contention of that article though <laughs> <laughs> the contention of the article was that the, this this second this uh, this this recent one i was seeing where they said that the simpsons has actually kind of gone back to form mm. in that regard you know, starting in season fucking 29 or whatever um, to make it, you know, a little bit more about there being a, a sitcom-esque, like the way South Park always used to, you know, I learned something today yeah. at the end of each episode. Uh, they've started to go back to that and they said it, it's actually, the show has benefited from it. It feels more like, it's one of those things that you don't you don't realize until you see it. That's part of what makes it feel like The Simpsons. Right. Uh, it's interesting. Which is interesting. I haven't watched an episode with uh, other than random accidents of hotel room cable, I haven't seen uh, a recent episode in in probably eighteen years or something. Mm. But I don't you know if it's even keep up to South play. Park, right? But what you keep up to date with South Park? Oh hell yeah! Although I haven't watched the very very newest. Actually, funny enough, our our Jolly Holly, you know, Mister. Uh, Mr. Smirking Baker here in the corner uh, <laughs> messaged me to say, dude, there is a uh, new South Park that you have to watch. <laughs> um, and so I'm on it as I as I uh, hide yeah. in my hotel room right now. <laughs> Why did that just happen? I lost Austin's audio. I feel like I should just address at this point because we're probably not going to keep all that tech support in. Oh, it says your internet connection is unstable. Exciting. Um, really? everybody's in different places. Everybody. Hi, welcome to Play Watch Listen. I'm Alana. I'm a video game writer. That's Austin Wintry. He's a video game composer. And that's Mike Bithel. He's a video game director. Um, I'm dog sitting for a friend and I can hear myself speak, which is confusing because I don't know how to use the setup. Austin, where are you? I'm in a hotel room in London. Why? I can't say. Excellent. Great. <laughs> uh, Mike, how about you? Where are you at? I can't say. No, I'm in I'm in the US. I'm over uh, I'm visiting my partner. Um and I can't say why either, because it's very mysterious. <laughs> and clearly, Troy, what are you up to? <laughs> wow, cold shoulder. Rude. He's ignoring us. Very rude. But look how much he's enjoying. He's having the time of his us. life. He is enjoying He's very himself. smug about it. He's it's so a very smug. cute picture of him. It's good. <laughs> it's a good picture. I just Googled Troy Baker Christmas um, and I did intend to do this episode with a Christmas hat 
clearly didn't do that. I went shopping but... for one I could not find one anywhere in like four stores like, in the hour <laughs> before this episode. Very disappointing. I have something to show you. You were in America and couldn't find Christmas yeah. regalia. I think I don't know about you. I think maybe America has cancelled Christmas. I don't know. I think there's. I think Christmas has been cancelled oh in America. I think there's. But there was Christmas stuff for sale before. It's like a war on Christmas or something. That's the vibe I'm getting. I don't know if that's. I don't know if it's true. Um, but yeah, it I, sells I, out really I, fast. That's why I think it was. Maybe I think, right. I think so everywhere kind of was very very sold out very fast. Yeah. yeah. Um. So I'm sad that Troy's not here, but Mm. this episode does go up on Christmas Day, so I thought this was extra nice. Mm. I had something made. Congrats for hiding from your family, everyone watching this. (laughs) You've got to go back down there and hang Shit! The host participant thing won't let me. Host disabled participant screen sharing. It sucks because I'm the fucking host. So I can't show you the thing that I wanted to. Oh. But I can share it with you, and I will publish it on, on YouTube. I basically had uh, someone I've been working with for a really long time. His name's Matt Ringstead. Animate um, an excerpt from the podcast. It is about a minute long, and <laughs> I think it's incredible. Oh, dear Lord. Um, oh, my God. I'll send it to you guys as soon as I can. And, yeah, I'm going to publish it on YouTube as well. Uh, it's super neat. So oh, Merry Christmas, that. everyone. Sorry you guys can't see it right now. Maybe you'll also see it christmas day merry christmas i feel like uh, but the, but the, the the execution of this delivery of it is very in keeping with the yes i love that this is this our last episode for the year surely is, right surely is uh, not technically if we record next week okay. it wouldn't be but i like the idea of us sending off 2021 with tech issues <laughs> that's great <laughs> love that for us um however Mm. Arcane. Well, can you send a can you send a link or something? <laughs> oh, you want to watch I'm it right now? To, yeah, I'm not. Totally. I'm not ready to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I'm I, expecting I arcane level production values here. I think if you guys watch it at the same is, time, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> that's I'm what gonna we'll say. Say. Yeah, and yeah. then I can edit the reactions in arcane, all real exactly. time. Like arcane is we have to request access, so let's do that. Oh no. Um. Sign in to view. Uh, so yeah, I'm expecting oh, Arcane on. has raised the bar for animation, so like that's the level I'm expecting here. So honestly, <laughs> if it's not hitting that level, then I'm going to be disappointed. Okay, hang on. I've I made a request. I've requested it uh, from it's, you, Alana. but I don't own it. So it's, it's, not, it's I was requesting it uh, of Alana for me. Yeah, your email. I disagree. I <laughs> don't think you are. Like, no, you didn't. <laughs> yeah, it's it says think you're wrong. Alana was given access, but you are a wintry. <laughs> it's think... like this is hey, blowing winter. my mind. Fucking where did where that save you? Using somebody else's PC is really hard. We really set ourselves up oh for success God. here this week. Yeah. Okay, I hit download. Key thing is planning. It's planning. It's always put yourself put the parts <laughs> in the right place. It just shows how. Account. Over it here. just shows how elaborate our production meetings are for <laughs> really? this show. Yeah. Well organized. <laughs> We've got a very good team yeah. assembled for the. Uh, okay. For and the producer uh, of the show is going to be so upset about this. Like the. Uh... I know exactly all their all their best laid plans, and wow. we just plowed right through it. And made this a mess live of producer in the room that definitely exists. Ah, oh, fucking. So I've downloaded it <laughs> with the intention of publishing. Wait, it on- no, I just I just got a notification. I think that that my approval <gasps> request was accepted. How? I'm assuming that your animator is sitting there guarding oh, their computer. Got it too. I've got it too. You got it too? Yeah, I've got it too. <laughs> okay, that's great news for us. Okay, so if me and Austin sync our play, yep. Yep. then you can put it all Wait, in. hold on. It's it's giving me... You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to download it because streaming on <laughs> I mean, just, Dropbox just the, is... Just the thumbnail is superb. Um I really tried to talk I, about I, re- I recommend the same mic for I'm, doing it, I'm on it, I'm on it, I'm on it. Just yeah. I do now. I've had many frustrated streaming attempts. But yeah, this first frame is very promising. This is the it's first good. frame gets me excited. <laughs> that, that's amazing. I feel like uh, I I should address in advance that there is no Austin in it because you were not here when this happened. So I've made a second that one possible? that has Austin in it. But it's not done yet. How's, how how is this how is this? Possible? I thought Austin was I canonically always attendance. present. Yeah, yeah. Got the one time he's not. Wow. Okay. I know. 
We three, two, one it. Did three. I leave early or something? With... <laughs> yeah, I think okay, so. Okay, yeah. Sorry, Mike. Go ahead. Count it off. Let's go. Three, two, one, play. From like, okay, I got 60 bucks. I mowed my lawns. <laughs> I, I lawns, what plural. I had to do to make this 60 bucks. <laughs> like, my birthday present, Christmas present, whatever. I'm like going to invest. This kid has like the voice of a tiger. I got right. 60 bucks. I got $60, I got $60 for my grandma before she died. God bless the soul. <laughs> And you know I'm 16 years old. Fine. <laughs> I, I like the grandpa like, very much. I know. Yeah. I let me finish this cigarette right quick. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be all right. I got sixty dollars. The bowl cut. Um, I get the fact. <laughs> he's good at the voices. I like the voices. I, I'm like closing my eyes and picturing a 16 year old, and I'm a very big fan of it. It's very good. This is gonna be. I got sixty dollars. I'm gonna spit on this fucking thing. Right now. There's a lot of layers moving around. I know. There. What was the story? Oh yeah, what was the story? We're so talking the about the kids, Lost Boys. The kids got sixty dollars. So kids got You should be done now if we all time that correctly. That was amazing. Oh. It's so Matt Ringstead I found because he listened to Podcast Unlocked, which is the Xbox podcast that I did at IGN. Mm. And he just animated something one day. And he's only gotten better over time. It's like been very cool watching someone get better and better and better. And then he started working with Funhouse. And then I was like, could you make some of these for Playwatch Listen? So I intend to maybe do like one every couple of months. And just it's really have. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, little Playwatch Listen animated inventions because i feel like they're very cool i did i just say inventions it's so confusing when you can hear yourself speak um i i i think he gets especially excellent points for the interpretation of what troy needed to do to get 60 dollars uh, <laughs> yeah the, the bloodied yes. burying of a body was a very <laughs> i did not direct that that was all him um yeah he he did everything i was just like here's a clip do whatever you want and uh, I think I've literally had to leave early like once. Yep, How did you manage to time. find? I know. I'm sorry. The... I feel very targeted. Right right now. Right now. <laughs> the next this one, I promise, a... has Austin content. Um, but he also was like, can you give me a height? It was the one thing that he asked for was how tall we all are. So that when we're standing next to each other, it's actually like pretty spot on. So I sent a picture, but I don't know. Is Troy all... taller than you, Mike? Is uh, I don't know. In the I pictures so. I have, I... he is. But aren't you like six three? I'm like I think I'm like six six three, but I'm maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm not measuring myself. How Troy Baker going to be taller than six three? I'm pretty sure he's Troy six four. Baker. But I thought you were. I thought you were easily six four or more, Mike. See um, now I'm completely. Conv- I don't know. I'm tall. I don't know how much taller are. I am than Troy though, or shorter. It we'll says to, also the internet Troy, says Troy is also six three. Okay. I'm five. All I know, all I know is that I'm basically six one, and it's very weird to me that I am not like I'm not even <laughs> I'm 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 not even like a contender for the tallest one of the group, and that's very rare for me. So I'm also because yeah. I'm wider. I'm like I'm like Troy. You know, Troy's Troy's tall in the way that he looks like he's been resized just vertically, <laughs> whereas I've been resized like horizontally as well. Like, it's, uh. it's a, creates that yeah. illusion i i don't look tall i look like i'm closer to you than i am that's what it is <laughs> <laughs> that's what that is like there's something wrong with your vision yeah, it's like a perspective illusion rather than <laughs> it, it's true actually that photo of us from the um the wick event yeah. um at uh, e3 like the the press thing that was you know from before it was all kind of officially out there mm. i shared that photo recently and i was looking at it again and i was like you look massive you literally look like you're just standing literally it is that you're just standing closer to the camera or like somehow somehow we're like shooting with different lenses. No, I'm, like, I'm, I'm like, like you know i'm like when you when you're making video games and you accidentally import something at like one at like 1. 1.2 1. 1.5 times the size by mistake and you have just this this weird one prop <laughs> that's too big that's me that's 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 me in my life yeah, see, basically i'm not a small dude but somehow Mike is I look big. significantly different size. I'm a yeah. giant. Yeah, there's no, there's no going around it. It's, uh, it's a nightmare <laughs> for on many levels. It's, it's great. Mike cool. confirmed large. Yes. Um. There you go. There's the very technical answer for him. <laughs> but uh, yeah, huge thanks to Matt for making that. I thought I would make it and hopefully present it to you guys. But I need to fix out this host issue. I'm going to email Zoom about it. Um. In any case, yeah. Why don't we actually talk about Arcane? 
Mm. We could also talk yes. about NFTs. What kind of existential crisis are you like trying to head in today? Oof, it's fun, isn't it? Too, oof. The two things that are at the forefront of my brain and the matrix. I'm interested in your um, take on NFTs, actually, Alana, because I, I know I've talked a very boringly about it on Twitter quite a bit. I'm interested in what your take on NFTs is. Well, I just tweeted just before we started the show. Mm. Um, people are like, I don't understand why all these gaming companies are trying to get involved in NFTs when clearly audiences aren't going to be happy about it or whatever. <laughs> mm. They don't care. Um, f right now, and I don't actually know that this works long term. Right now, NFTs are extremely profitable for Ubisoft, for example. If they're like, you buy this cloak, this cloak costs $100, um, and then the audience who buys this cloak will resell this cloak for $1,000 and will take a cut of every sale. So they're s selling an individual... Mm -hmm. It's still a fucking microtransaction, just prettier. They're selling an individual microtransaction for more money um, for an audience who will potentially even start generating their own. So potentially we could see a world where the audience will start making the cloaks and trying to sell them. Uh, some games have already done this minecraft so say, for example the, yeah in counter-strike uh, yeah there's a, there's a massive steam workshop community of people that make custom weapons mm -hmm. and this is so similar and... to counter-strike it's a perfect parallel that anyone's mm -hmm. thinking of it differently to what counter-strike has been doing for forever is strange the that, that's why it doesn't strike me that's why i don't understand why it's so like offensive because i go it basically is just a new technology of a same idea i agree uh, it's it, just a microtransaction just a different yeah one. um however mm -hmm. the thing that works against it that i think is going to cost money in a way that i'm confused about why people aren't talking about and mike i feel like you could speak to this mm. if we create these nfts and i get my cloak in fortnite that i want to take into god of war for example uh and you i'm can't. like hey i bought this why can't i put it into god of war that's how nfts are supposed to work i'm supposed to be allowed to take my cloak into everything people think that you can just kind of pick that up yeah and just sort of put it into Who the other game that? Of course, that's going to I mean, cost developers money. A lot of people selling money. NFTs right now think that. Like a they lot fully of think evangelists, that. Yes. genuinely, I've had that pitch at Dice, like from the evangelists. I've, I've, I've watched, and I will not, I'll be good, I won't name, I've watched an NFT evangelist, this was about two, three years ago, pitching the owner of a massive AAA studio with a massive AAA franchise and saying to this guy, you're going to be able to buy guns for your game and they're going to be able to take them and put them into another person's game. And that, that owner of the studio will be able to be like, technically how? Why would I want that? <laughs> Who's going to pay for it? Yeah, it makes no sense at all. It None of it makes like any sense at all. It seems like Epic does want it. And I think Ubisoft could do it in their own games. In their own games. But that's games. the thing in that gets game, me. Yeah. Is like, this is just fancy microtransactions that in theory being on the blockchain, etc., <laughs> the individual users can make money from. I don't see how that's different to a million things that we've already done. Mm -hmm. Minecraft skins. That yeah. stuff already exists. The thing that, that does get me that I think a lot of people aren't thinking about at all is the, well, I can put it in any game. So the issue with putting your cloak into God of War after it's in Fortnite is the amount of time that it takes an artist or slash an entire team to make that cloak work in God of War is not necessarily going to be financially worth it whatsoever for... And, de and certainly well, not also, when you multiply it infinitely by the number of... Exactly, yeah, because no, they're all gonna unique. Happen. It's not going to happen. So but the, also the amount of work that, that would require work. for devs no, in the long formats. run it, for, it, is the problem yeah. when initially it's like, sure, that's a lot of profit because you're selling individual items for a lot more money. You couldn't even do this with music. You couldn't even, like, if you wanted to play back, I want to listen to, you know, Bear's God of War music while I play Fortnite. Even that wouldn't work because even though wave files are simply wave files, that's not how game scores exist. They're not just playing through a, a Spotify playlist of sorts. It's, it's all scripted, like, which are attached to in-game hooks that are specifically made based yeah. around what the game is supposed to do. So it's like even and, – and, and any art assets and things like that are going to be far more proprietary and complicated than music is going to be. So it's so – it's, I've never heard anybody make that, that claim though. That's a bizarre – oh, That's being – that claim being made by lots of the NFT people. Uh, that, to, well, to that, paint it, it's like ignorance. even if not everyone is, is making that claim, that is the claim that they are excited about. 
That is yeah, the thing. I don't even understand the, the excitement is, either. The rest of it is. Crap. Why would I want that? Yeah, the rest of it is. I don't want that in God of War. I want like a I want like a Last of Us shiv in God of War. Like what the fuck? That's not. So I want to. No. What are games? Back. Let's roll back to Austin. So Austin asked the question like why I don't understand why people are annoyed about this because it's pre existing technology. I think the there's a couple of answers to that why people are irritated by this. One is um, obviously negative the effects on the environment. Yeah, the environmental impact. It's terrible. When you say it's terrible, there's always five people jump on you on Twitter and go, "Well, they're working on making it better." cool but until that actually is the case <laughs> it's terrible for the environment and that's that's just the truth of it um the, the the but i think the main reason game developers are annoyed by it is that it's not it's 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 uh, honestly that it's dishonest that it, it is just the functionality we already have on servers all of the claims about blockchain and why it's better are so easily and obviously dismissed by anyone with any technical skill or grounding in programming or game development. Or who's ever had a Minecraft server. <laughs> just practicality. I can log everything. The one the one that gets thrown at me a lot whenever I criticize it is some um, people saying, yes, but on the blockchain, you own it. And that's so fundamentally wrong and misle mm. misleading. I um, mean, the idea, so the idea would be you'd buy a gun for Call of Duty and then you would own that gun. And if you were banned from the server because you were an awful human being or whatever, um, you would still have that gun and no one could take it away from you. And technically, what actually would be the case is you'd have a token saying that you own that gun, but your gun only exists within the game of Call of Duty. And if you can't play the game, your gun is meaningless. Your gun doesn't exist. Out, it's Schrodinger's gun at that point. Like until you can actually play the game, the object you own has no value or meaning, which is which is where right. all of this falls down. At which point, this is literally exactly the same functionality as if you just bought something on, you know, Activision's store for the game. Yeah. Like, and that's where it goes. That's why that's why you see a lot of basically most people who actually make video games kind of saying this is nonsense. The other aspect I think is is worrying and potentially risky for the industry is the enormous amount of illegal activity around um, these things and for literal and money laundering, money laundering Ponzi schemes, and you can, and the the Ubisoft things are really in, worked out in a really interesting way. So Ubisoft just did there was it Ghost Recon they did they did some yes. some yeah they did some crypto stuff for they did basically I think they did some NFT uh, DLC essentially exactly the model we're talking about here. And they lost a lot of money on doing that because every time you mint, so every time you burn some trees down so that you can set, so you put something on the blockchain that costs an amount of money, they had to mint all of these items they were going to sell. And then in terms of the money made from those items, they actually made less than they spent minting them. So Ubisoft they only lost. Had, it was like 10 sales? It was ridiculous. And the reason for that, well, you could look at it a couple of ways. You could look at it in a generous way, way to the field, which is, oh, well, Ubisoft just didn't do it right. You know, they didn't do it properly. But if you look and if you track the data floating around with most of this NFT stuff, what you very quickly realize is it's a lot of people selling to each other or indeed to themselves and creating yeah. the illusion that stuff is selling. Essentially, people are selling items to uh, anonymous people. Occasionally, what's hilarious is sometimes people have messed up and not logged out their account before doing this. So you have lots of examples of like people buying their own thing that they made for $10,000 because they didn't log out of their account into their anonymous account before they did the transaction. That even happens in, on StockX. Yeah. As soon as you bid on a pair of shoes, they bid on their own shoes to try to outbid you. And you can tell. And capitalism's been playing <laughs> these games for a long time and they work. But what's interesting about the NFT stuff and the blockchain stuff is it kind of is the worst possible version. It's the most, because again, it's unregulated. I think taxation's starting to kick in now, which is the point where, you know, everyone's going to be making less money on it. And therefore probably it's going to start to die a death. But yeah, it's, it's, that's why it's frustrating. It's not frustrating because it's inherently terrible. NFTs, they're, they're technology. Technology, in this case, I'd say by definition, doesn't have, it, it's not inherently good or bad. But so far, it's been used for snake oil salesmen exclusively. There's not really been a use for it that's valid or useful that can't be done cheaper, easier, and with better uh, customer service by other means. It's the other thing. I'm in agreement. People make the claim, sorry, I'm just ranting now, apologies, this is my fault, um, but the people make the claim that um, NFTs are somehow more generous to the end consumer that, that because because it's on the blockchain, it's inherently better owned by the users, so it's more consumer friendly, which is ridiculous. If I sell you something on your credit card and I misled you, lied to you, uh, spent your money, done something awful, 
you can track that. You can go to an authority. You can you can get me in trouble. You can get your money back. You can get your insurance yeah. to pay off. There's a lot of systems in place to protect you from me as a company defrauding you. If it exists in the magical world of blockchain, right now there's very few protections. Your money goes, your money's gone. You're, you have yeah. way fewer consumer rights in that space. It's a kind of, it's a fun libertarian fantasy until something goes wrong and then there's just no one to protect you and it's the Wild West. Um, I think there's a, a lot of interesting value in the suggestion that um, blockchain takes ownership uh, out of the banks. Um, and I can understand valid. how people get behind that, right? Like mm -hmm, I, I understand why it's appealing. Um, the NFTs thing, I hate doing this, but um, I saw people saying, I hate, I hate saying that because it's like who, how many people, whatever. Um, but for the purposes of like, whoa, are people really saying that? There was a conversation that I just read on Twitter, just as an observer, did not partake in, was just reading some very pro NFT people talking about video games. And they were like, well, every publisher will end up putting NFTs in their games because you wouldn't want to lose our audience. The amount of money that they can generate. Technically, yes, from a publisher standpoint, you can see, again, yeah. people are buying microtransactions that they've already bought a million times before for more money. Um, the first one, in theory, not so bad. And then when you get people to... It's so hard to talk. Um, when you get people to start creating their own, that's when... Ubisoft just banks in the same way that the PlayStation Store is banking or the Xbox Store is banking or Steam is banking with 30% of every sale of every game, right? Mm -hmm. But they're like, well, then every person will end up having NFTs and will support my cloak across their games because they don't want to lose out on us. You're so much smaller than you think you are. So, so, so much smaller. There are not enough people that that would ever matter. People are still going to play video games even if they can't get their cloak in a game. I don't buy that you're not going to play the next last of us just because you can't have joel wearing a bright pink cape but i think that's where i think that's and that's i've seen this point made i'm stealing this from others but it, i think it's so true that's to me where it betrays not from the not from players like i'm not dismissing players who who are excited by a cool new thing although it is weird to watch players begging for more drm it's a very strange culture for sure they've made microtransactions <laughs> appealing but it's interesting when you see the people pitching these ideas uh, or talking about like the exciting potential of basically of owning stuff and stuff, it kind of betrays that these are not necessarily people who want to play games to have fun or be entertained. It's oh, yeah. you can earn money while you're make while you're playing games. Yeah. Oh, you can show off that you have an awesome cape in a game. These are not people who are interested in games as a medium from like a creative or entertainment point of view. There's always been it's people. I mean, again, using using Counter Strike as the example mm. again, like that's not a new demographic mm. but i agree with you alana that it's also far from the dominant one um sure oh it's definitely know, a dominant yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah uh and and i agree those people will continue to exist i don't remember if i've said this mm -hmm. on this show before but i had the thought of like of all the conversations i've had about how the stock market influences the games industry i've been like to people i've been you know had conversations where they've been like well then should i buy shares in this publisher and like actively participate in, you know, trying to give them more money when they do something I like or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and it occurred to me that even if all of the people who were invested in EA were huge gamers, I think by the end of a week, maybe 99% of them would turn and would go, oh, I can make money from this. And they mm -hmm. would stop sticking to the morals and they would end up being looped into the game. Power corrupts. And I think... Yeah, and I think that would happen Money to the vast, yeah. vast, vast majority of yeah. people that like you could get gamers involved in the stock market and and participating in the games industry in a different way, in a financial way, outside of just purchasing video games. Um, and they would all very quickly be like yeah when it's your money oh, in the game i think cash. you feel differently right like if it's your if it's your pension for sure you you you're if you're putting your pension into something if you're going well how financially secure am i going to be as a as an older person yeah you're going to care less about whether the new call of duty sucks or not like by definition those are those are two completely different tiers of problems to be thinking about right like yeah most adults would appreciate that like it matters less on a personal level if Call of Duty is good than if you're going to... And once you're starting to make those kind of mental leaps, you're, yeah, like you say, you're you're going to think like an investor because you're an investor. I think you'd lose point. it really quickly. You'd be like, yeah. oh, how many microtransactions do they have so that I can 
cash in on that. Make sure we're profitable. It would happen so fast. Um, and yeah, NFT, NFTs is just a, a fancy microtransaction. It's very weird to me that people don't see it that way. Like to your point, Austin, about Counter-Strike. Counter-Strike is the perfect example of something that's been happening for a really long time mm -hmm. that somehow some people really want who hate microtransactions. Somebody just asked me, do you think that NFTs could get rid of microtransactions in free-to-play games? <laughs> what? Yeah. They are microtransactions. They're more expensive. Unregulated microtransactions where you can be... If you thought loot boxes were bad, my God. Like, that's the other yeah. thing is when you see, like, but it's how NFTs work. still a it's literal boxes, definition. It's gambling, Micro it's all that. Yeah. transaction. Sorry, it's legally it's not gambling, to be clear, because, because it's not legally anything because it's unregulated. So I can't accuse yeah. it of being gambling. It does strike me, though, that over the long term, it does offer the potential to be the same thing as microtransactions, but somehow the better version because there is that sort of that, you know, authenticated ownership aspect of it that microtransactions doesn't even aspire to conceptually. How is that? How, how, like in you, what way would it be different? Because if you wanted to buy something that's uniquely yours, like when I look at like a look at the popularity of, of Star Citizen, mm -hmm. where it's like, you know, for two hundred bucks you can get this ship that will never be available again, mm -hmm. and people buy them on the, that basis, and you know, say what you will about that whole story, but as a concept, people like having something that's unique and special, especially in the context of a big communal game like that. Yeah. So it struck me as a thing where. The, the technology is sort of specifically geared towards saying, you know, okay, yes, everybody acknowledges digital copies are not exactly hard to make. But in the context that – so like selling NFTs of a JPEG of your painting makes a lot less sense to me than selling NFTs of like this cloak in our, you know, free-to-play mobile MMO or whatever. It struck me as, you know, it's not – I've never been that type of gamer. I don't look deeply enough into the um, underlying – you know, business models or things like, or like you, I, I've heard these claims of how easy it might make things like money laundering and whatnot. I don't claim to know the inside workings of that enough to throw down a strong opinion, but just through the narrow lens of microtransactions in which you would want to actually own something unique in the game, I don't see how it's not a sort of an improvement on no, the I existing would agree. model. It's the same. I also it's the think same, to be clear, like you your examples it. from Star Citizen. Well, you can't, you can sell it you could sell it within players of that game. So you could also just exist on the server. Star Citizen had, if Star Citizen added a secondhand market to their game, it would achieve exactly the same goal. Which I think you, Roblox already does. Yeah. As well. And I mean, they're, they, you know, they do other things that are awful. Um, but, but, <laughs> like, but like there's, there's, yeah, it's, it's, it's the same, it's the same functionality. And that's to be fair, fair Austin, I completely agree with you. Like if you removed, the, the the if you added exactly the same amount of um, adjudication that you'd have on say a credit card purchase so that people can't be screwed out of money via it and if you uh right. if you made it they didn't have an environmental impact or had a similar environmental impact to other forms of currency and obviously everything has an environmental impact um i'd be i'd be absolutely okay with it to be honest though if you fix those two things the majority of the people who are currently trying to work in the space wouldn't want to work there because ultimately right now the benefit of this is the lack of regulation if you look i i, I think nfts i don't know the numbers off the top mm. of my head but the vast bulk of money in nfts is owned by like a very i think it's less than a percent because it's 100 percent a bunch of people creating the illusion of a much livelier marketplace than there is the the implication is that gamers don't actually en masse want this or, or have an interest in this. To me, it feels it feels the same as, uh, you know, the 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 people who are really excited about it and evangelizing for it just feel to me really not that different from, you know, when the iPhone first came out and there was like all the early adopters that, you know, were almost religious in their, in their evangelizing mm -hmm. for it. And every, there's often new things that some little nucleus keeps they keep it afloat. In fact, if it's a really cool thing that's been made, you know, the creators of that thing will often look to that little early adopter sure. nucleus community and be like, we survived because of you. Um, now, you know, again, I'm not trying to paint an overly ch charitable or optimistic or rosy picture as if I care more than I do. It's not one of those things that, 
like I've seen composer, you know, musicians dabbling in it as well. And I always am curious if I'm overlooking a an entrepreneurial opportunity, but it just struck me as like, I don't think this is something I really feel like investing a huge amount of time into learning about. Well, um, so I'm in agreement with you. A mistake. That um, I do think having your own cool thing is cooler than a regular microtransaction. That's way cooler. If I can get my own horse armor, I like that. That's neat. Um, when it comes to the people who are the early adopters ranting and raving about it, the thing that makes it different from an iPhone, I think, is that these people are trying to get you on board to profit from you, almost in a pyramid scheme kind of way. So if they're already involved sure. in Bitcoin and then they go tweet about Bitcoin and they're like, hey, you got to buy Bitcoin, you guys, you can't take that advice at face value from anyone who's saying that because yeah. as soon as you buy it, theirs is worth more. Also, iPhones are cool. <laughs> like, it, like, like that's the other. It's aspect. not a like, clean analogy. I'm not. I'm no, not no, denying sorry, that. Yeah, and I appreciate. It. I'm not trying to like, but but I think that's another. There's a, a a more general thing here, and I've seen this argument made. There's a brilliant graph that a bunch. I'd like of to NFT point out, I'm using a Samsung Galaxy, but go ahead. Other mobile phone uh, brands uh, exist, but they're not as good as iPhones. Um, the the I I I've, I've people send me this graph of like internet uptake. And, and, and the argument they make, and it's a, it's an intri- it's a compelling argument for the 30 seconds before you think of it, of like, people used to say the internet had no value, and, and now it's part of everyday life, and, you know, internet can do all these things. But you could, you could go Remember to Remember when they the said Heath Ledger couldn't play the Joker? Exactly. It's that kind of argument. And it's a terrible, like... It's Heath really- Ledger was the NFTs of actors. That's Is right. that the yes. Alana Pierce take? It's a, yeah. but, it's, but it's an argument you see made a lot, and the, the problem with it is... Every bad idea was also treated as a bad idea when it came up for the first time, right? Like, so it's 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 kind of it's an argument from a position of this thing in the past was good when people thought it was bad. Therefore, this bad this thing will everything that people think will be bad. It's a bad transition. It's a bad transitory statement. It makes no sense. Um, and and that's the I get what you're saying though. It just simply means that you can't make the you can't. That's itself not an argument. Is essentially all you're saying. I'm saying that yeah, it's no argument there. The, it's, the bad things were also bad. <laughs> yeah, I would I would be. For me, it's just when do we give up? Because like you know, I, like I said, I've been being pitched. I've been being pitched specifically NFTs within video games for about three to four years. Like at events and stuff. Like they they they've had people there who are who are shit who are trying to sell that as a concept. And it's the same stuff. They've not the the argument's not improved or changed. There's no new examples of games that have done it really interestingly or well. And ultimately, it just doesn't solve anything. And and I, I still keep my my brain keeps coming back to the thing the thing you said, Alana, where it's like, oh, you know, owning my own horse armor would be cool. It would, but that that's not what this is. And it's and, and that inherent dishonesty and the way that it's sold to people as you own this. When you absolutely don't on any level, on any meaningful level. No you more don't even you... own a game you buy. Exactly. Well, that's true as well. But at least with a game you buy, if you want to play it, in a lot of cases, and this is something that's changing, right? But in a lot of cases, if you can find an old Xbox and you put your disc in, it will run. That's obviously not the, that, that's that's becoming hey, more. I can still play my N64 games. But you do not own a piece of unique horse armor and crucially as well it won't be meaningfully unique because for the amount of money you would pay for it i'm not gonna be able to pay a team to make you a piece of horse armor that's genuinely unique it's going to be like from a template no, that's, that's why issue. you see all these ugly kind of monkey and lions right because it's just it's just bad asset swaps you can't create meaningful you can't create ten thousand meaningfully different characters for a video game and have those certainly be not in multiple unknown. games it yeah. It's just more work for the devs. Which we'll never do. At a large scale. To make 10,000 unique items? So it becomes about stats. It becomes about stats. Or it becomes what Austin was saying with Star Citizen about like a time locked thing. And that's cool because presumably the people who make Star Citizen go, okay, well, we're going to make this, put this on sale for two weeks or whatever. And we're going to charge this amount. And we know a lot of people will buy that. We already do that with pre orders. We do it with pre-orders, we do it with those things. It makes perfect sense, and Star Citizen, it's a simple profit and expenditure. They'll go, yep, that makes sense. But they're not going to make all of those ships uniquely different because that carries a cost, even if it is just a stats change. Um, and that, not to mention, of course, all of the stats change. The number of people who've come up to me, me 
or that people come up to me at conferences and say like you'll you'll be able to buy like your own mario character and they'll have a they'll have a specific jump height and a specific amount of damage they can do and it's like how do you balance a video game way to destroy multiplayer gaming these ideas don't tend to be coming but that's where ultimately that that's where that's where ultimately the players would be the arbiter of of that real fast i mean play people wouldn't want to play a game that has that Mm -hmm. kind of it, you know, sort of chaos injected into it, and they would. I feel like I feel like they'd just stop playing, or they'd be I like, you know, right. kind of like how there's PvP servers and non-PvP servers on MMOs. You know, they'd be like, here's the chaos Wild West NFT server where people can buy their crazy stat, you know, like you know PCP characters that can do anything. And then, uh, and then uh, here's like the normal balanced game that we actually spent ten years making. But that's going to create interesting things, right? Like, so uh, you're absolutely right. I think Mark it's like on the like, Saturday Night Live, is. the All Drugs Olympics. Yeah, exactly. Um, like, even without my bookshelf, by the way, I can still do it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, nice. <laughs> um, the <laughs> it's a magic. It's just skills. Uh, I own something. There you oh, go. That I own that great. book, and I can use it. But but even that creates really interesting dynamics, interesting in like an awful way of like if you've bought if you've bought like your character this this these boots that make you jump high and you've been told these boots can be transported into every game and then when you go into a game you've got them and it's brilliant fun but then you know the developers nerf your boots that you bought it's annoying look at how how annoyed players are when that when we we as game developers like nerf the stats on their favorite gun in a first person shooter imagine if that's something they own and have or think they own because they read the small print and they see themselves they see me taking something from them at that point true that would be fascinating that's going to be and the blockchain doesn't stop you from making changes or from patching things nope it's my game change whatever you want that's what people don't seem to understand is is ob- that book, my copy of the SNL oral history that I just held up, that book, I own it, I bought it, I have it in my possession, and if I walk around the world with it, I can read it and I can have my time with it. If I'm carrying an object uh, in a virtual space, the laws of physics are defined by the people who made the game. The laws of the universe are defined. I can make it that when you walk into my game, your book is going to turn into something completely different or it's going to be torn into shreds. And we, 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 when you say to someone, you will own this, you imply a permanence that is not going to be the case in any video game context because it's not how any virtual world works. There is no, there's not even it's a It's like saying you'll never take the servers tree. offline. Um, exactly. Ex- exactly that. But I, I feel, but, but surely, I mean, but, all that is still true in a world of microtransactions. It's, and it's the reason people don't uh, yeah. like microtransactions. Or the reason a lot yeah, of people Yeah, and that's like why if you don't like them, and, and, and similarly, people don't play games mm-hmm. that, that leverage them if they don't. Like that's where I look at it and I go, there's sort of I, – I look at it as a curiosity that I don't find particularly threatening because I just think if, if it offers something valuable – then people will find ways to do cool shit with it. And if it ultimately is some shell game or a Ponzi scheme, uh, the players are going to, you know, there might be this little window where people get fleeced, obviously, and that sucks. And, and you know, everyone should be careful with how they use their money. But, like, it won't survive that window after the initial excited early adopters. If they get screwed, you know, it, it, I just don't see how it, it won't fail unless it offers something valuable. Like, I think that's everything honestly, you're saying yeah. will be borne out by experience. With, I mean, this is me and Austin 100% like your free market kind of perspective and your your ideas that, you know, ultimately people the buyable wear and if, if someone messes up, they, they should spend it's money It's kind better. of the ultimate test of the free market, isn't it? Because it's well, I, like... I'm, it, I'm, it, and it, obviously it, I'm coming from a political place, which is way off to the other direction of like, no, we should probably have safety nets and protect people from bad actors and all, which is the opposite side of... I'm not saying one's better or worse, but it's interesting that even on NFTs, like you can see the difference in our perspective on how problems are solved on like a population level. So it's interesting. It's yeah. an interesting difference. I'm, I'm, for what it's worth, I do think that consumer protection is a good thing, if, if only from a, from a at minimum, at, at, and I, I wouldn't stop here, but at minimum, a, an education on what you're getting into before you before you spend that money. And if you choose to say, you know what, I have, I have some fun money. If I want to throw $1,000 around on an NFT or $50 or $100 or $10,000 or whatever, you know, then that's when I say, go for it. And if you spend it and it goes to shit and you're like, well, that fucking sucks. I'm going to go tweet so the whole world knows that that was a shit idea. Like, 
the system will auto correct you know because again we're not talking yeah. about we're not talking about something that people's lives hang in the balance on account I think that, of, I think like, that it, I think like I said I think it's just a difference in like, I don't think systems auto correct I don't believe that's true but that's a bigger conversation for a uh, but in this case how not though because players would simply stop either playing the games that lean on this heavily or they would just stop using this system of the game in the way well, that so sometimes... for example ponzi yeah. ponzi schemes in the real world right like pyramid schemes um what's it called now what's the new phrase for it but but not vertical marketing um they changed it oh multi multi-level multi marketing M- uh. multi mlm yeah mlm which is which is just a pyramid scheme um it's a ponzi like, scheme yeah yeah so those have existed forever right i don't actually know what the origin story of those is but like a hundred years right we, as a society, we have education that those are bad. Uh, there's been lots of examples of it being bad. Millions of people throughout history have lost money on those schemes because they always do because it's a, an awful thing. There's been no auto-correction in 100 years society-wide for pyramid schemes. They still exist and st- are still profitable for bad actors. So that system hasn't auto-corrected. I don't think hasn't. that's a good example, though. Be- I mean, the... Like as free markets depend on there being enforcement of 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 like fraud is illegal. Ponzi schemes are never. There's no defense of a Ponzi scheme under that kind of like if someone defrauds you, yeah, um, then they are in the wrong in all cases. Like there's no, but they still there's no continue s- to act and make billions and have conferences and. Well, that's but but that's like saying we haven't solved war, we haven't solved disease. We like human the human experience is still fundamentally the same. There's always going to be people that are mm-hmm. fundamentally shitheads who try well, to me, leverage let me, let me the weaknesses okay, of let the me system. Re, let me reframe it for you. Pyramid schemes have not gotten less successful in a hundred years. We've not made progress. We've made progress on. War I, well, and I would schemes. actually, I would argue they they've probably become more successful short term because things like the internet have probably made it easier to fleece a lot of people at once. Yeah. But again, that's just that's my point. in the that same way that nuclear like bombs that. have made it easier to kill people in a short order relative to swords and bows and arrows. Like yeah, but you could make that's an just the that... tragedy of technology that can help us as well as hinder us. So economic systems are not auto-correcting is what you're saying. I, I n- no, that's not what I'm saying. I, I'm saying, I think that over the grand scheme, bad all I'm saying, at least in the context of NFTs, is bad products bought to market that are non-coercively offered and non-fraudulently represented will fail if they don't prove to have some kind of value to the people involved in that transaction. Okay. And sometimes it takes a while for that value to bear itself out or not. And there are pros and cons to that. And I would never proclaim to be some pure zealot that says that the systems are perfect but i do think that when things are offered non-coercively and there's nothing that says you must buy this nft in this game or whatever that it's like no i choose to try it or not okay. and, or my buddy did and he lost money and that sucked and my counter like, argument is that that is self-correcting over time my argument my counter argument to that is a similar pyramid scheme structure has not decreased over time, as you said, has actually increased probably. I don't know the numbers on that, so I wouldn't make that statement, but it's not decreased over 100 years, which implies that no, the market and consumers don't auto-correct or share information in a way that makes them less susceptible to bad actors. Um, but that's, My concern... Well, I don't, there's been books written I'm on not, both of our perspectives. Like, it's definitely, we're not going to definitely... We're definitely not gonna I think it. I land somewhere not, in the middle, I, and my thing is there's so much money in it that i actually think Mm. nfts are inevitable um and that this is what we're headed towards and the reason that i see it as a threat is that nfts feed directly into uh service games live service games everything being online the death of single player all this Mm. cliche shit that we talk about nfts lead straight to that future where you get your instead of assassin's creed 2 you have your assassin's creed infinite um and i think the only reason that i would think if they didn't provide inherent objective value that I could see uh, is that there's so much money in marketing that you can so easily tell people there's value and they'll believe it. So even if there isn't an inherent value that I can see in my horse armor being purple when someone's is like a slightly lighter purple, Mm -hmm. um, you can be tricked into thinking that's valuable because there's so much money in the marketing of that thing. And humans 
are so susceptible to marketing. You can be told that you're uncool if you don't have something, and then you'll go buy the thing. Cool isn't fucking tangible. And that's when they already have so much money from the jump in AAA publishing or whatever else, and they're going to try and tell me, hey, you got to do... I mean, it works with Ultimate Team. You don't actually own those players, but people think it's cool or they think that they Mm -hmm. have to. Thus, you feel compelled to buy them regardless of whether they have value. Though I guess then you could make a case for, well, the value is feeling cool or feeling like you're a part of Ultimate Team or feeling like you see these players. Sure. Like in t- Technically, that's value. But but my, my thing is, I think this is going to happen. I think we are full steam ahead, unavoidable, because the companies who are interested in it have too much fucking money. Facebook, for example. That we are going to have this stuff marketed to us in a way that they will make us want them. And if we think we don't, they'll change the marketing strategy and it's done. Like I've already given up. <laughs> It's happening. <laughs> because they've decided Merry it's Christmas valuable everyone. and profitable, Merry they will Christmas. trick us into thinking it is. Yeah. yeah. And I think we're relatively easy to... No, it's proven. We are very easily tricked by marketing. I think right now my take on it, and, and I, I'm ready to be wrong on this because I think I probably will be. Um, right now, I think it's 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 interesting watching and just in the game space because I'm definitely not qualified to be on the game space. Um, the... Every CEO has done the press re- press release saying we are looking into this, we are thinking about this, we are considering this, we are exploring our options because right now um, investors are, are are aware of the term M- NFT and there's a, a market reason for them to express that position. Um, those that have tried it so far in the game space have massively failed. Like it's just not worked because the audience isn't interested. Because if you're not artificially inflating these numbers, there isn't a marketplace for them. Um, and that's and because because <laughs> weird weird thing to say I know but because AAA have quite high ethical standards when it comes to uh, literal fraud they've not they've they, their their stuff has very visibly kind of failed so I I remain hopeful that this can't cross over simply because there isn't actually any demand from consumers for it and that actually. From a from a big company point of view, it's much better for them to have complete ownership of the servers and the the, the, the means of sale for the goods they're selling. So I'm I'm I think it's a fad. I hope it's a fad, but I'm also very aware of all the millions of people in history who've said things are fads that they became. I think we're going full matrix, in. man. Yeah, I think we're going 100. percent But this is I'm like buying when land in the meta. Said, but this is when people, you know, like when the very first MMOs took off, and it was like. This is all future video games now. Um, <laughs> yeah, remember. Because remember. it was like a new business model, you, you know? You can pay $20 a month or all $10 And you could buy month. somebody's World of Warcraft character for $10,000 ages ago, which is pretty similar, just not I'm pretty, on the blockchain. I'm pretty sure, to be to just correct Austin there, I'm pretty sure MMOs were invented about a month ago and they're called the Metaverse. I don't think... I, I, <laughs> the, first, the first wedding in a video game happened two weeks ago. It was reported in the uh, New York Times. True. The it's Final Fantasy exciting. economy is an interesting one. There are a mm. limited amount of houses. Mm. And thus, all of the rich people have already bought out all of the houses. <laughs> and so the economy in the game is like... It's Rental. fascinating. It's super fucked up because there's no entry point for any new players to buy houses. Games are getting too realistic. It's a problem. I mean, the Eve, <laughs> like that stuff's multi-level people losing $10,000 in a day because of a, a sabotage attack that was planned over the course of a year. It's really interesting to read about. Eve's um, brilliant. Like the book. I, I love it. Pull up in the book, which is the history of that universe and the the awful like way players are treating each other. I, I love it. Yeah, that's it's fascinating. I, I just feel like but that's kind of decision... what you sign up for with Eve, right? When you go into Eve, totally. you're expecting that kind of thing. Yeah. I feel like I'm looking right now at a decision of do I buy land in the meta right now to make sure that in ten years I can just profit from that as passive income, the same as real estate and sell my soul and feel like shit for it? Or do I regret it in 10 years that I didn't do it? That is genuinely where I think we're at. What is, what is, uh, what, what about it? I get that you're dubious of the whole thing, but what about it? The selling of the soul is the environmental impact specifically. Ah, okay. Right. Sure. Yeah. Because it gets astronomically worse the more of the stuff that we play with as well. So like 
it feels like the active acceleration of <laughs> climate change to contribute <laughs> to this machine. Otherwise, I would it's just see it joke. as a stock. It's if Philip K. Dick would write this, and we'd all be that's a little on the nose, Philip K. Dick. Like the, during during the during the last kind of stages of uh, global warming, we would invent a currency that required global warming to exist. I, I I would give I'd actually taking all that putting all that aside, I would and this is just me breaking character completely. The Warren Buffett kind of recommendation, which is invest in what you know. If you don't, if you if you're investing in something because you you feel based on other people's opinions that it's worth investing in, then you probably are not going to be able to tell the difference between a good investment or a bad investment. You should, sure. you should invest in stuff. It, what you should be investing in, Alana, is like stuff where you feel qualified to know the difference between a good and an excellent. Because that's the other thing that's worth remembering with, with all investments is, and this is where all of the passive income YouTubers that exist are awful, is no one makes steady money off the stock market unless they're making excellent bets consistently because sure. the margins are so small. So yes, could you live to regret not investing in something? Sure, but you could equally live to regret not you know, spent wasting yeah, money on true. something. I bought Bitcoin in 2017 and made a lot of money mm -hmm. um, and I didn't understand it, which is not a good case for doing that repeatedly. It's one fluke. Um, that might be your fluke. Like that's that might my be frame your of reference. One. That might be yes. your one fluke. That might be to be it. clear, I <laughs> haven't done it. My intention, if I were to invest in anything, would in, I would do real land or gold, <laughs> something that doesn't like astronomically. Those seem more consistently reliable. Yes, uh, on the long term of human history. Um, I, I just uh, it's not into, near the into coast. that idea. land near the coast. I, um, <laughs> inland, inland, inland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The future coast. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's what they call futures trading. I, right? Oklahoma. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I, if, just to put it, just to put a button on it, to make sure that my point was not unclear. Mm -hmm. um, I I uh, I felt like we were kind of talking past each other because it felt like what you were describing was a disappointment in fundamental human nature and like the capacity for people to to harm each other through Ponzi schemes and, and whatever else. Um, uh, whereas I think I've, I, and like it's saying that it's sort of, it's sort of the technology's responsibility to prevent that or to mitigate that. Whereas I see it as humans will always find a way. Um, and it's far better to focus on what the upswing is of the way things that can be, can be used to bring value and meaning and mm. positive, uh, impacts to people's lives, knowing that it's unpredictable how some conniving asshole will find a way to use it. There will always be yeah. that person because humans are going to human it, it. Like to me, that's, that's the, the, the whole sales pitch of the free market is on the basis that the positive will outweigh the negative because people are engaged in voluntary transactions. And, and as long as you have an enforcement of, you know, property rights and things like, you know, uh, uh, fraud being illegal always, <laughs> you know, like you can't just lie to someone and be told, ah, well, you know, like, so I completely, to be clear, like I agree. I, the only, the only place your description of my position differs is I don't think technology has any responsibility because technology is, it's a hammer. It's who's holding it that ultimately makes the decision about how it's used. Yeah. And the I don't, only, I don't mean to misrepresent no, your I position because I agree with that. Yeah. The only difference I think in what we're saying is I think you, and I think this is honestly just, it's, I don't think one is better or worse than the other. I think it's just two different ways of looking at things. I think you put a little bit more emphasis on individual responsibility, and I put a little bit more um, importance on, um, uh, you know, I guess judicial or kind of uh, cultural, political uh, responsibility. I think I think uh, the kind of oversights you're talking about are crucial. I think capitalism can work if it's got ridiculous amounts of limitations on the bad actors. Um, the free market, it becomes a definition. There is no market is actually free, except, you know, a market like, like, uh, like NFTs, where there is no oversight. Right now, fraud is legal in the NFT world, by definition, because there's no one, there's no oversight, there's no way of tracking 
um, a lot of what goes on. So right now, it's very easy to commit those crimes. And my argument would just be to, hey, we should we should have exactly the same kind of limiters on this marketplace as we do on the real world marketplace with all the tanks and you know uh, countries backing it up rather than just kind of individuals. It's an interesting summary, yeah. Because I, I don't I don't know that I necessarily disagree. My, but you, I think your summary of our our different perspectives is right. Because my first instinct is if 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 it's really easy for things to go really horribly wrong for the user in the NFT space. My first instinct is to just say, "Well, tread lightly." Uh, <laughs> right, which you're right. Yeah, that is that is an individual responsibility kind of take. Uh, I think but I don't. I think uh, right now, that doesn't very, mean that. Yeah, I think we're a Brit talking to an American right now, and I, I don't think there's a problem does. there. I think it's just it's just a different <laughs> kind of perspective on the same. Kind of stuff. Well, and and I'm not opposed. You know, I'm not anti-regulatory. Uh, constructs you know i'm not i don't think i mean that's sort of like civilization is better than like you know the primordial ooze you know i mean I, the hottest, I that's the hottest take of the show that's the title of the episode <laughs> civilization is better than primordial ooze i hear you Austin. yeah hear you. come on where is my where is my uh animated uh, <laughs> uh that's all it's gonna be it's just monkey heads floating in an ooze. I want my, yeah, my like <laughs> Kurskazoct style uh, weighing of civilization versus sort of like pre pre humanity. Yeah. All right. So arcane. <laughs> I think it's ethically, uh, you know, I think it's great. It's, it's fucking brilliant. I, it's beautiful. It's, it's incredibly well produced. It's. Did you both finish? I've still not. I've um, two more. So maybe we'll maybe we'll do it next maybe week. Maybe we pause it. I will say the first three episodes, I was like, I don't like this that much because I was very annoyed by some of the ch- tropes with the kids. Um, I was like, okay, huh. you've got the like, oh no, please let me help. Oh, why won't you let me help? Trope where they leave and they say no, you have to stay home, and then they show up anyway. How many times has that fucking happened? I was like, okay, mm-hmm. I'm. I'm so used to this. Um, Vi also being like this tough woman with the shaved side of the head. You seem boxing. I was like, what? Come on. Um, and then it all paid off. And I, I have mm-hmm. to say, potential spoiler, maybe warning, maybe slightly. I was so mad when I realized she was Jinx. I was like, you kept calling her a Jinx and she has the blue hair. And I didn't connect the League of Legends <laughs> character as fucking Jinx. Because you kept calling her powder. I was like, fuck. Like, it's so obvious. I couldn't believe I didn't realize that. Fucking hell. Because I should have been like, oh, it's Jinx. She's going to go evil. Which actually is an interesting thing that I've seen people say about Arcane. If you played a lot of League of, League of Legends, the show isn't as good. Just because you have too much knowledge of where it's going? or And how characters turn out. Right. Well, and it feels like the show has been made... I don't know. I'm not a big expert on League, uh, but I I... It strikes me as the show is basically a standalone. We are not beholden to the in-game canon t- t- in this ultra rigorous way. Yeah. Like we are drawing inspiration, but creating something for. Because you know, Anhila and I both watched it and were glued to it. And 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 as neither of us are big play. I mean, she's got way more info than I do because she's done the cosplay world so much, and these characters are everywhere. And she's herself cosplayed a lot of a lot of League of Legends characters, but. But uh, still, not a huge player, and I, I, for sure, not. Um, and I found that they did such an amazing job at not making that a hindrance. Doesn't at feel all. like a video and game. It's interesting show. that it's actually maybe even so far the other direction. Yeah, it's actually helped me. Yeah, again, I obviously I I used to play a little bit of League. I haven't played in ages. I know who Jinx is. There are plenty of characters that I wouldn't know or remember. Um, but like with her, yeah, if you had put it together or you played League more often and you're like blue hair, she's got these striped pants that she wears and they call her a jinx. I, mean, I would have I been definitely like, did that. Oh. Like I I definitely watching the show, I remember turning to Carrie like halfway through the first episode and being like, okay, so there's definitely I don't know anything about Levo. So even like, the definitely stuff she there's a blue haired character called Jinx who throws grenades in that game. I know <sighs> that already from this. So I I'm judging you a little bit, Lana, I'll be honest. Well the issue is not actually <laughs> with the blue haired <laughs> character called Jinx. It's that powder as a character was not like Jinx. Right. Okay. So I had the separation of the two. Um mm-hmm. and then I when when she Still, showed you up you have to finish. You have to you have I will. To, yeah. Yeah. Where they where they where it goes It's just beautiful. It's just so good. I was so blown away. It was And so... also thinking about the amount of characters they introduced in a really short amount of time was the thing that I as a writer was like, wow. 
Okay, I mm. understand who all of these people are. You're showing me sometimes three or four different perspectives in two episodes, and I'm following all of them. Um, super well placed. Yeah. The comparison to Game of Thrones, I think, is overused when talking about literally anything with a political dimension or like intrigue. But this felt so Game of Thrones in the sense of, like you said, yeah. pacing us through, introducing us, t- telling that world. The thing I noticed, I thought was really cute, was how much like Game of Thrones, that first episode, you don't see any characters that aren't human. You don't see, I think you see like one or two figures like in the corner of frame, but like mostly it's very standard, very almost feels like it's set in, uh, you know, old France basically, rather than like a fantasy kingdom. And that second episode they push, so you know, and it just slowly but surely kind of builds and stacks that stuff. And which, and, and then yeah, say the character stuff as well. So it's fascinating from a production point of view. My god, like it's everything is just done in the most expensive way possible. Like, totally the, the effects work, the 2D animation effects work is like that's craft that just doesn't exist in, in TV or film anymore. Like, you do not do dust clouds by hand anymore unless you're this show because you're spending all the money on it. It's crazy, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's cool. Impressive. It makes me excited about excited. It's so hard to talk. It makes me excited about all the extra stuff Riot is doing right now. Uh, if this is that good, and they're making a single-player game, uh, which they're, they're, doing, are, yeah, they're they working on a whole some, bunch of different stuff. Because they shot the IP around to like indie studios and other studios, right? I remember like they're doing, they've got a few things going on, right? Yeah, with yeah. a bunch of different people. Yeah, I'm excited That's to see cool. what they make. That's fun. Yeah. There's something else that I, I haven't researched the details of this yet, but... One of the first things that jumped out at me when watching the show and the first time the credits roll is that the like top level showrunner creator of this show is Christian Link, who got started with Riot as one of their composers. And I was like, "How the fuck did this happen? I've never seen that. <laughs> Why was I? Not I've never that? seen. I, I, well, just have never. I mean, he's been very you know tied in with with Riot for ten plus years, but I." Um, and cool. I had seen his name less and less uh, over the last few years, which suggested to me he had migrated higher into the, into the you know the more ad, not admin but like the sort of creative leadership as opposed to um, you know the the rank and file uh, creators uh, executors of the art as it were, um, and because uh, yeah I was like wow what a cause he's I've actually funny enough I've never met him I know I know a bunch of the people that have worked with Riot I've worked with. With Riot, in fact, I kept going. When are they going to introduce my? I wrote one of those champion themes. When are they going to bring my character out and uh, <laughs> see if they? Uh, did it, see if did they it happen? It. Did you have, have your have theme? Did you have your theme? No, no. I I, I did the uh, I did the theme for Volibear, who they reintroduced at the beginning of the pandemic, and uh, I think uh, it could be a long time before we see Volibear on Arcane, but. Uh, um, but yeah, no. It was it was um, it was. I was like, damn. I want to. I want to. Um, no more details about how the the composer kind of migrate into this position of like literally this is my show because that's a hell of a thing this isn't just any show it's like one of the clearly <clears throat> top shows uh, you know of the year i mean across yeah. all totally. ways you could analyze it's so good i, I was Brilliant. like fucking hell a plus man good for you it makes sense in retrospect like it's not something i thought about when i was watching but it it, it is very music driven right like the, the music the score the kind of it, it feels it feels like someone with that mindset could do without the imagined dragons no not an imagined dragons fan fine with Imagine Dragons. I don't think that song suits the show. And every time I find it jarring. Mm. It's it's funny I I yeah, sometimes I feel that way. Uh, uh and and I was what was I watching recently? Um Oh, was I was watching I was watching um I'd never seen How I Met Your Mother before and mm. recently was watching episodes of it. And like occasionally they have really sort of heartfelt you know, where they don't go for laughs at the end of the episode. So it ends kind of quietly. But then their sort of <laughs> generic, very upbeat t- title theme comes in over the ending credits. And it's very, it's just a symptom of old fashioned. Yeah. Like I remember Breaking Bad being very interesting about how they always did different yes. mm-hmm. in titles music on every episode so that it never felt out of step Sometimes with where the silence. episode was ending. Yeah. 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 For sure. And so it was <clears> like, to me, you know, this does have a slightly old-fashioned TV quality in that in that regard because that theme is sort of like this abstraction of the show that exists separately from the actual sort of events of a given episode. Mm. But otherwise, musically, you know, Alex Temple. So this is a funny thing in the world of 
being a contemporary composer, there's this there's this thing of VSTs, virtual instruments, which is basically, you know, if I want to write an orchestral piece, but I don't want to hire or I can't hire a, an actual orchestra, you can create, well, you know, a mock-up or you can create a, 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 a you know, depending on how good you are, a, a reasonably realistic Some of us ship games with a lot of VSTs in the Austin, some of us. <laughs> yeah, well, some, <laughs> some, some, some impressive AAA games do too. Uh, or, or orchestral recordings are definitely not, a, a, not a, an automatic given. Hmm. Um, but, um, but years ago, like well over 10 years ago, there was this guy um, who, it, you know, there, if you, like, so it was funny. There were two composers. If you if you Googled the name Alex Temple, like more than 10 years ago, two composers would show up. There was like this composer who was based in, I, I want to say Chicago, who was, uh, I, I, I can't remember where she's living now, but there was Alex, compo- Alex Temple, the composer. She now goes by Lexi, I think. Um, I'm, I'm possibly getting that wrong. Um, but like of the academic world, um, you know, sort of so-called modern classical music, you know, very, very, um, um, some really great music, actually. Um, uh, not a given in that world. Um, <laughs> but uh, but uh, definitely not so, so-called commercial music. And then the other Alex Temple was this guy who basically was just the best VST dude you could imagine. Like you, he would upload mock-ups of like, okay, I tried doing, you know, Stravinsky's Rite of Spring with the latest uh, sample libraries from East West. And here's how it turned out. And you'd listen to it and you'd go, fuck me if that's not a recording of like the fucking Berlin Philharmonic. Like he, his mock-ups were head and shoulders. And it's somewhere along the way he got plugged in with the riot folks and started working on music of, for League of Legends. And, um, and he's the composer of the show hmm. now. Hmm. And there are some cues in that. <clears throat> Again, I don't, since I don't quite remember where it fell in the show and, and neither of you have finished, I won't say what, but there are a few scenes where I literally like stopped it and, and, and was like, I, I hope they put that out on Spotify. Cause that, hmm. that is a fucking, that's an Emmy worthy cue. Hmm. Uh, like, it's amazing that this person who I first heard of over a decade ago, who was just basically good with their computer, Austin, what do you has made their way into a position, key? a piece of music in a media production. Okay. Why call it Q? It's Q's off an event in the, in the show. So it's, it's based like, on the timing of it? It's, it, no, it's just, that's just, that's just the, that's just. The ter- I, I, I actually don't know the original, um, like probably 1920s origin of the term, but cues, they're often, another old school term is they're referred to as starts. Hmm. Like, oh, we have 17 starts in this movie. Like there's music, hmm. fresh a fresh piece of music that we record and you know proceed start to finish starts 17 times. Interesting. Um, as, as distinguished from needle drops or licensed music where you're, you know, licensing some song and that's playing on a radio in the background or playing on screen or somebody is singing on screen. You wouldn't typically call those cues. It's the composer writing the score is writing cues. Interesting. And so like the way old fashioned uh, <clears throat> movies would work where you would have a, um, a, a reel of footage that ran for 18 or so minutes uh, that, you know, like when you, if you know, depending on how old one is, uh, when you would go to the movie theaters every 20 minutes or so, you'd occasionally see a little circle appear yes. in the corner. And that's the real change yes. that being being uh, warned of. Uh, and the good projectionists, obviously, you know, that's the thing they're looking for. And, and on they're on top of it. So there's no break in the projection of the movie. Well, when you're working on the movie, you're also working in reels. So the old fashioned way that they would label cues is like the first cue of the movie, which in you know old-fashioned terms would be your main title sequence, or even the overture if it's a sufficiently old-fashioned movie where you've got you know just main titles come up, big piece of music plays. That's called one in one. So you would meaning real one, first piece of music. Um, and so interestingly, there's two schools of thought on how to number those because some people have like a global number. So if the first piece of if you have five pieces of music in real one and then 22 minutes into the movie is now we're in real two and you've got your sixth piece of music. The question is, is that two M six meaning real two, the sixth piece of music, or is it two M one 
the first piece of music of Real 2. Interesting. Uh, and I've always thought it makes sense to have uh, pieces of music that are real specific because if you add, like if I add a sixth piece in Real 1, it fucks up the entire numbering scheme for the rest of the movie if if I have a running total. It's like when you set the right numbered lines of code. So you have like line 10 do this, line 20 do that, line 22 do this, line 23 do that, like 30 do that, line 40, and you have to kind of cram them in the gaps. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, it, exactly. And so anyway, so Q is, is just always the term for – because it's not accurate to call them – you know, songs and, and it's not <clears throat> accurate to call the, I mean, sometimes cues are songs, but that, but, but could it be, one is a, could it literally have been like the cue for the dude on the piano in the theater to start playing generic comedy track number mm. two? Was it like, was it cues for the that pianist? Was it that means. originally? There's a lot of there that that's an actually really accurate guess. Uh, and it's possible. This is one of those things that I've, I've read so many books on the history of film music mm. that I, I probably just have forgotten this piece of trivia, but that that's a really good guess given that a lot of our, a lot of the film music traditions are basically tumbled out of the live silent theater mm. accompanist tradition. Um, Such a rich history. And, uh, Cause Q so, yeah, it, DJing, which is what sparked me to ask is if I hit the mm. Q button, I can hear playback in my headphones of the next song that I might be trying to queue up. So it doesn't play for everybody else, but I can hear it ahead of time to make sure that mm. I can beat match up whatever else. Um, so yeah. Q is just... Different, same word, different definition. Yeah, <laughs> it's felt the same. It's literally the Q button. And here in the yeah. UK, and... queuing is a natural, a national pastime. That's something we do for fun. We'll just kind of line up outside somewhere. And, um... <laughs> well, and the funny thing is that... that oh, spell, no. Yeah, well, spelled... we spell everything differently here. It's fine. It's... it's, it's... Q-U-E-U-E. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah very differently spelled but i see people all the time mix those because they'll say oh i really liked that q in that movie and they'll spell it oh, they'll spell it oh, no, okay. I, I was kidding I'm always like you're trying too course. hard here yeah <laughs> yeah no it's anyway point point being there are cues there are pieces of music in arcane that i was completely uh blown away by where i just mm. thought man they they are not um I think they're just going for it. They, 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 they're just, it, it's, it, it is, it, it, I just love that it's so unashamedly like we're going to score this like it is an, it, it is an old fashioned epic. Uh, I feel that way and... about the writing. The acting is also very good and the animation mm -hmm. is very unique, but yeah, they really fucking went for it. I feel like if it doesn't get award nominated or doesn't win, ugh, keep it will. Up on my own words, it'll win everything. Fine. If it doesn't, it's just that anti-animation bias or anti-video game bias. I don't, I don't, everyone's paid off. You're wrong. Well, the it's animation thing show. is real. It is, it is hilarious sure. watching awards shows, like with, with, with friends and my partner in the animation industry. Like the amount animation is overlooked by the rest of the film industry is astonishing. Like it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. It's usually not, interestingly, it's not usually the case uh, for music. If you want to win an Oscar for, for best score... Scoring a Pixar film is uh, often your best bet for getting at least on the list. The Michael Giacchino uh, Award for being Michael Giacchino, yeah, yeah, it's a good award. yeah. He he yeah he won his Oscar for he won his Oscar for Up. Uh, you know Thomas Newman's been nominated a million times. He's actually I think the most nominated person who's never won. Wow. I think in the whole Academy, um, and because um, uh, he's nominated like sixteen times or something and. Damn. Uh, with no wins though, um, he's very. But but a couple of those were like Wally -E and blah blah blah. Well, a couple of your favorite uh, records. Those aren't animated nice. films. No, but I was like, I bought them. I was like, well, Austin, I bought these. These are the two <laughs> best Star Trek. Did I see Star Trek Four. You got the Leonard Rosen. I uh... love that. I know it's the one that people hate, but I love that soundtrack. <laughs> that fanfare, that <laughs> dun, so... dun, 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 is amazing. It's so schmaltzy. I just it's always fantastic. remember the very silly. The very silly kind of quasi Mozart music as they're escaping the hospital. Oh, it's I ridiculous! Just, it was oh, it's like, great this fun. Is so it's like Star Trek comedy, but like Star but yeah, Trek you know, Trek I mean, Trek. even even um, even Hans Zimmer, you know, people think of him as today he's you know he's the Interstellar, the the you know maybe Pirates of the Caribbean, but mostly these high prestige you know Inception, Interstellar, Dunkirk, blah blah. Mm -hmm. But he won his one and only Oscar for The Lion King thirty years ago. Wow. So that's a great soundtrack. You know, it's not an uncommon works phenomenon. Works for music doesn't work for other things. Yeah, music is one of those. Yeah, partly, honestly, people. 
the academy is just as human as everybody else. They're not. They are not more sophisticated in their voting patterns than than you would guess. And so the bottom line is, if you score a movie that has music very forward facing, then they'll notice it and they'll go, "Oh yeah, I, I remember that there was music, <laughs> and, thus and therefore I will vote yeah. for the movie they, that everyone saw with their grandkids as well." Right? Like that's the other aspect. Yeah. Is like every. I mean. Yeah, because they don't have to watch it. They can just watch a minute. There was that, there was that French silent film called *The Artist* um, mm-hmm. that literally had, you know, this big lush orchestral score as literally the only audio that you heard in the movie. So it was not exactly a shock when that won the Oscar <laughs> in two thousand and. 12 that film uh, like cleaned up right like i remember that one i've not seen it and i don't it's just culturally just disappeared like it was one of those one of those oscar movies that was massive and then just kind of i don't feel anyone talks about it. my agent has a whole running gag about that where he's like you could do a whole trivia on oscar winners who no one remembers yeah uh, <laughs> like because sometimes you just are in the right place at the right mm-hmm. time there's like yeah. guys um, hits right then, yeah yep and, but I don't think I, I don't feel like that will be the case with Arcane. Arcane could easily be one of those that fits in the like Jimi Hendrix category of mm-hmm. sustained interest, you know, well outlived by themselves, but well, actually didn't win previously any even major a awards. You know, bias that I think has probably gone. I think it's probably. Oh yeah, I mean Netflix. I think had by far the greatest number. Netflix and Amazon both, I think, were competing for the most number of total Emmy nominations across all their various categories. Yeah, but previously like they, they weren't even considered, they, so that's a win. Seems oh, it's wild been, a, it's been an Mass exponential shift. Was not there. It's wrong. But that's the it's horror wrong. bias. It's, not fair. And it's, it's everything. It's a bias against you know the people we like getting good things. That's what. It but is. it is also funny because the word bias the way that we use it really just means opinion <laughs> it's yeah, exactly. like it's their opinions agenda yeah. <laughs> like yes it is this person yes, that's didn't the do point. exactly what i wanted them to do therefore they're biased yeah. biased I, it's, um, it's the same as when people qualify what they're going to say by but look this is just my opinion of and yeah. i always think <laughs> i always yes. think you know I uh, yeah I I we're not I gather this is not a peer reviewed statement you're about to <laughs> offer up I sh- I'm 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 banking on that it's um, fine I would promise that we will talk about arcane next week but I can't make promises to our audience I'm not going to continue to lie to you I'd love to who knows um, but otherwise we continue to lie to what are your prior we guys? promise them we'll talk about shit and then we ne- hey guys uh, do you want to do the Last of Us Part Two spoiler cast next nah. week. <laughs> I'm off next week. You can do it then. I'll, uh, I'll, take, I'll, take, I'll take one for the team. I'll skip. Uh, um, <laughs> I think you taking one for the team would be playing through it and finishing it. That's and, true. Uh, I, I, I'm a good man, but I'm not a great man, Austin. <laughs> I, 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 the world is still too depressing to play through The Last of Us Part 2. It's fair. Um, but Merry fair Christmas, enough. everybody. I will actually edit the animated thing into this video, but I'll also release it separately. And there are more of them coming. Nice. I think that's super that's cool. That's really good. It's really yeah. good. Yeah. Congrats. Congrats to him. I'm, that's I'm, wonderful. My apologies that I already forgot Matt his name. Matt Ringstead. Um, Matt oh, Ringstead. Yeah. Well, bravo. It's really hilarious. Super cool. Um, we will see you all next week. Bye. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs>